The space community is again abuzz with anticipation as we've entered the specified launch window for Starship's second launch, set between September 8th and September 13th. As if adding fuel to the excitement, Musk recently tweeted, Starship is ready to launch, awaiting FAA license approval. However, the space industry has always been known for its unpredictability. A mere few days before this eagerly awaited second launch, there seems to be an issue with the launch pad, evident from the ongoing activities at the launch site. Regardless of how advanced our technology becomes, or how meticulously we plan, there will always be unforeseen challenges or areas of improvement. And when you're dealing with something as gargantuan as the Starship, the stakes are even higher. To give you a sense of its magnitude, this rocket stands at an astonishing 394 feet tall and weighs roughly 3,000 tons when fully fueled. For some perspective, the famous Statue of Liberty, from heel to torch, measures only 305 feet. Starship dwarfs this iconic monument. Launching such a mammoth structure demands a support system that's not only technologically advanced, but also incredibly robust. SpaceX responded to this challenge by creating the Orbital Launch Mount. But this isn't just any concrete fixture. It's a testament to human engineering and innovation. However, during Starship's first launch on April 20th, the sheer power of its 33 Raptor engines wreaked havoc on this infrastructure. The pad was obliterated, forming craters beneath and scattering debris far and wide. The reason for this damage? It's straightforward. Unlike many other launch facilities, SpaceX hadn't built robust protective infrastructure beneath the launch pad. For instance, NASA's launch pads at Kennedy Space Center have intricate flame trenches and deflection systems that divert the intense heat and force away from the pad, preserving its integrity. SpaceX's omission of such measures led to the significant damage seen after Starship's launch. To prevent a repeat of such an incident, SpaceX has implemented several new techniques, the most notable being a steel-cooled water deluge system. This system releases water during the ignition of the 33 engines, serving as a protective barrier and dissipating the energy. But it's this very system that seems to be the recent hiccup. Although there hasn't been an official statement, there's speculation that the old manifold of the water deluge system had issues. This assumption is derived from the recent sighting of a replacement manifold being delivered to the deluge system's water tanks. So what exactly is the manifold's role? It is an essential component responsible for effectively channeling the enormous quantities of water required during Starship's launch. To put it in perspective, the system can discharge up to 350,000 gallons or approximately 1.3 million liters of water during a launch. The water deluge system is not just a concept on paper. It has been practically tested multiple times and has proven its effectiveness in mitigating the intense heat generated during rocket firings. On July 28th, SpaceX conducted the first full-up test of this system. The results were promising. But the real challenge came on August 6th when the system was put to a more stringent test during the Booster 9 static fire. Despite the immense power emanating from the 33 engines, the water deluge system held its ground. Even though the engines didn't fire for their entire planned duration, the aftermath showcased a launch pad that remained unscathed. Building on this success, SpaceX conducted another test two weeks later. This time, there were no half measures. The engines roared for their planned five seconds. And yet, as the smoke cleared and the thunderous roar faded, the launch pad stood undamaged. It's not just the infrastructure that SpaceX has refined to ensure the pad remains unharmed. They've also tweaked their launch procedures. One significant adjustment is the slower ramp-up of the engines. When Starship ignites its engines, it takes an elongated 10 seconds before it begins to ascend. In stark contrast, the Saturn V, one of history's most powerful rockets, had a more rapid liftoff. Once its engines roared to life, it took merely seven to eight seconds to start its journey skyward. While this difference of a couple of seconds might seem trivial to the uninitiated, in the world of rocket science, every moment is crucial. These precious seconds can greatly influence the forces and stresses exerted on the launch vehicle, impacting everything from fuel efficiency to structural integrity. And most recently, the SpaceX team achieved a significant milestone by placing Ship 25 atop Booster 9, resulting in the formation of the tallest full stack ever assembled. This crucial step signals that the launch is imminent. Musk showed his excitement by sharing glimpses of this feat on social media. 
Now what comes next? The immediate plan is to conduct a cryogenic proof test, filling the rocket with super-cold liquid nitrogen to assess its strength and the orbital launch tower's compatibility. Success in this step will pave the way for the wet dress rehearsal, where the rocket will be loaded with its actual fuels. This is one of the last preparations before launch. Remarkably, these steps could be accomplished in a mere day or two, highlighting SpaceX's efficiency. If all goes well and the launch site doesn't suffer too much damage after this second flight, we could see Ship 28 and Booster 10 making their move swiftly. These vehicles are already deep into their build and testing campaigns. So if the stars align, we might witness another Starship flight before the year concludes. At first glance, this pace might seem incredibly fast, but when you consider Musk's vision, it makes perfect sense. He shared a tweet earlier this year stating that the Starship could deliver 200 tons of payload to a useful orbit. This means that, with 50 rockets launching every three days on average, they could send over a megaton of payload to orbit annually. Even as SpaceX appears more ready than ever, a pivotal element is still missing for the second launch, the launch license. For many, the wait for the FAA's launch license felt even longer than some of the other major Starship updates. The bottom line is this, no matter how ready SpaceX is or how impressive the Starship becomes, without this license, the rocket isn't going anywhere. Sure, they could try to launch without it, but that would lead to a lot of fines and tangled regulatory problems. Issues like these could seriously shake up even a big company like SpaceX. They learned this the hard way during Starship's early development. The FAA is held responsible for SpaceX's actions. For example, after the April 20th launch, an environmental group sued the FAA for granting the license, citing environmental damage. This is why the agency often presents hurdles for SpaceX when it comes to obtaining the crucial launch license. Given the complexities and increased scrutiny, the approval process this time around might take longer than we anticipate. So, how far away do you think we are from the second Starship launch? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it useful, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.